Starting us off tonight is Devin Shersonoff of Pavan Ranch to tell us how high resolution maps made by drones at different times of year really helped him understand a number of management issues he was facing and to hone his management practices and strategies. Together with his wife and in-laws, Devin runs this multi-generational ranch that supports more than 300 head of cattle on 860 acres of hay, forage, silage, and grazing, in addition to many thousands of acres in Crown Range. The maps were made by John Wilson of Four Elements Emergency Consulting in Grand Forks. John uses drones regularly in his work and wanted to try mapping a ranch. He came by Pavan four times last year to show the changing of the seasons on 200 acres. Yeah, thanks a lot, Andrew. So I just pulled up a, a Google Maps and you can see the red line. It's kind of our approximate property bounds. Uh, so we sit on just about 600 acres here at the home ranch. Um, and uh, I had an outside uh, party come in and do uh, some drone footage for me. And this Google Maps picture is about a 2012 picture. And so with these files, we're able to load them up into Google. And so I put up my first layer and that's gonna be a May 23rd picture. Um, and so you can see uh, before this, I would have terminated uh, what was there um, in preparation for seeding. And so you can see my strips. Um, and so into seeding as, uh, I'll make a few notes as we go through the seasons and, and talk about a few different things. Um, I'm going to jump over to this new map. And you can see how I did the seeding. I'm not sure if it's loaded, but there you go. But here's how I would have done my seeding. So we're doing a no-till drill operation on our seeding. Um, this east side, about 30 acres, uh, was in an annual last year. And this west side was just put into an annual uh, half of the year before, I guess. Um, and so we're just using it to break, break the sod. Um, growing annual crops and moving into perennial crops again. And so this just kind of gives you an overview. Um, taking that May 23rd photo, uh, and I just printed it out and did a bunch of drawing on it. Um, and so you can see I, I have a bunch of different, I have a different seed mix here and on my headlands that I mentioned down here. Um, and then I kind of have two different mixes and there are they're peas, oats, triticale, base. Um, with kind of these cover crop mixes that you can buy in these particular ones I've gotten from places like Union Forage and Silagro. Um, they all carry different ones. And then this triangle is actually, uh, it's actually, it's kind of funny. It's a non-ALR land on our map. And so um, it's actually quite rocky. And so I, I did some extra of this fruit master. And so you guys can watch some of these things and see through the season. Uh, if we end up seeing a difference, I guess. Um, and you can see my note here, uh, we brought in some lime uh, as this Western side needed lime in preparation for doing perennials here in 2021. So I'm gonna jump us back into Google Maps. So what this drone does is it flies and takes a bunch of uh, stationary pictures that get stitched together. And that's why all of these outsides are, are gonna be funny. Um, ranging on a varying of heights gives uh, a different level um, of quality. And so uh, John Wilson, who I think is actually on uh, with us, but he, so he did it for me. Um, and I think it was about two and a half hours for this whole flight 
um, about six battery changes. And then this file in, in the big file, it's, there's, quite, there's a high volume of quality to them um, if you want. Um, and it's about a 200 megabyte file. And so this file in Google Maps isn't, won't give us quite the detail, but it does allow us to go around. So I'm just gonna go through the seasons for you guys um, just as an overview and you guys can watch and see. So this would be a May 23rd. Uh, and we're going to move to uh, June 22nd. Perfect. So up right now is a July the 19th. <clears throat> um, and I didn't actually look and see. It would have been uh, probably about a week from uh, this picture. Um, that we would have cut this crop. And so it's interesting to, to think as you see the overhead view, the different things. <clears throat> this is probably the one that I feel like I can see a lot on. Uh, maybe you guys are picking up, picking up on a few things, but it will kind of be a bit of a, a where's Waldo for you guys. Um, and so moving into August the 28th, So as you can see into August, it, it really does change and it really does start to look dry. Um, and you even notice the changing on the perennials to the south of this pivot, um, just into a different color in that later August season. So again, you're probably seeing maybe a bunch of different things. Um, so I'm gonna put us back into the May. And it's gonna go over a couple things, um, uh, topic by topic, I guess, and then I'll cycle through the seasons on that topic. So kind of the first thing here is all of this winter trash. So uh, due to some fencing infrastructure and some water infrastructure, we were able to feed our cows uh, out here for the first time ever on the ranch. Um, and so we fed out pretty hard that cow herd and you can really see what that did. And we can zoom in on it here. Um, you know, cows are, cows are lazy and, and they love to stand along the fence line. And so you can see, and this is, this is thick, thick manure here. And um, one thing really opened my eyes of how can I change where my cows are standing if they're gonna be standing somewhere overnight as a group. Uh, utilizing maybe electric fencing to move this line um, so they're not here. And then there's just all of this general debris here. Um, you can see, you can see these different lines and these different blobs and you're maybe wondering what they are and, and just due to the later thick snow that we had, we used uh, a D6 cat and we plowed some windrows free of snow to dry some ground up for the calves um, and therefore ended up feeding on those pretty heavily. Um, and so you can just see the impact into the ground of that. So I'm gonna leave it here and I will cycle into a June. And so you can see in June, uh, this would have been after seeding. I, I would have planted May the 19th. Um, and so it would have been just before that last picture, uh, but here we've got just about a month of growth. Uh, and you can see kind of the differences. And if you can remember back to my seeding map, I was actually running east to west. Um, and so again, you can see the impact of that trash. The trash was really hard to get through. Uh, just it was hard to seed into and so uh, I felt like it definitely affected some of my seed catching. And rolling into July, I felt like I could notice in, in maybe some of these thick areas, um, but actually if we look where the cows were standing on the fence, it, it actually looks quite thick and lush. Um, and again, we can even see the impacts 
down here of where we may be fed out uh, and had that snow cloud and where there was that different ground disturbance, you can see it into the seasons. And then into August, and I think this is uh, maybe one of the most interesting uh, for me is what's happening uh, at the end of August here. We took a crop off, we're still irrigating. Uh, everything else doesn't look like there's that great of growth. Um, and, and so the, the two questions would be, is it weeds uh, that came through or is there just that much, I guess they're calling it armor on the soil. And so it's actually holding moisture better. Um, we're kind of two thoughts for that. So we're going to go back to May. And if you can remember, we had this lime pile here. And so we would have spread this whole uh, western side of the pivot and we would have done lime about three tons to the acre um, just to deal with some pH in our soil. And so if we do start to uh, zoom in on some of this, you're hopefully you're starting to see uh, some cross hatching. And you should be seeing some cross hatching. And what that cross hatching is, is those are tire tracks um, from spreading lime that we were using our five ton fertilizer spreader. And it's just like powder. And so you can't actually spread it very far. And so you can see we're doing about 20 or 30 foot uh, spacing to try to just get an even spread of that lime. And so going on, I guess, that ground compaction, if we roll into June, you can still kind of see some of the differences. Um, I guess another note in May, that also would have been right after I would have seeded. So there's another trip that tractor is making on that same ground. And so here we are a month later in June. And, and I think the big difference we probably see um, in this area where it was limed is that it's different than the area that wasn't really limed. And this line, I was trying to figure out if it was uh, the line that the pivot was sitting on for a while, but more than anything, I think what I'm thinking is that the compaction just had that big of a difference, um, that this is actually our lime line, um, and that it's just set this ground back because we've compacted it. I would love to hear anyone else's thoughts on it, um, what their thoughts are for that. It, uh, Maybe my other thought would be this side over here was in full annuals for a whole extra season than this. Um, that might be a different setback, but in terms of seeding, if you remember back to my seeding map, I was going east to west here. Uh, I was spraying east to west. There should be no real line difference here um, that we can see. So again, moving into July, I feel like we don't quite see the compaction. Really, we see the trash here again, um, but kind of you can't see uh, some big ones for compaction. A little bit here where there's a corner of a gate and the cows are going to water. Um, but I think the one big thing everyone probably sees is this dot here. And so I'll zoom in on it. And what this was actually was just ended up being where we put mineral for the winter um, and into the spring. And here it actually shows up in July. And I think that was probably a big surprise to me that we didn't see it through May, June, and all of a sudden we do see it in July. Um, and so again, makes a big learning was really get that mineral moving every every other day, every three days, those cows really congregate around it. Uh, and there's a lot of hoops coming to one spot and stopping. So moving into August, um, 
if you guys are thinking about com compaction, uh, maybe try and look and see. Uh, I'm, I mean, other than what the pivot tracks are going to be doing because they're squishing everything underneath it. Um, if you really look to the fence here, would probably be the next thing you guys can see. You can see these faint lines, and this would just be where we're hauling um, all of this silage off. Uh, and so you can just see all the tractor tracks coming in here and you can see how nothing's wanting to grow here. And I think this is just a normal uh, or a to be expected event at these gates is, is it is hard to grow crop right at your gate. So I'm going to take us back into May. Uh, basically just planted. And as we, as we go through, I guess my last uh, touch would be just plant differences. Thinking back to my seed map, I had done a couple different cover crop mixes in with my peas, oats, and triticale. Um, and this triangle here. Um, and then my headlands and this, this triangle down here, I did some uh, different seed mixes in there. And so those are maybe a few key places to watch as we cycle through again um, to see if you can see any difference. So here in June, not really any, I think, big, big difference. Um, you can see my seeding lines here in this triangle. Um, I think one of my thoughts might be is if this is greener, it might have got a bit of extra fertilizer and therefore it, it, it just emerged a little bit better. Same thing with some of these headlands where I was turning around and I would have spilt some seed, seed uh, just coming out of the drill, uh, spilt some fertilizer. Maybe this just got a little more nutrients here. So again, here we come into July. Uh, again, it, it sure shows us a lot uh, and it's really fun to look at. And so, uh, I'm not sure if you can see a line difference. I don't really think you can uh, in this V if we're thinking about the V uh, for where I would have put extra root. So that would be like those daikon radishes and stuff to try just break up and put some more organic matter in with the rocks really. Um, hey, but it, it's surprising it, it grew well here when we think of what it looks like to where all the winter trash was. Um, you can see my zebra stripes here. And so what that actually is, and it's, it's kind of cool to see and see that you can really see the difference um, is that in the one box on my cedar, I can split five feet of one thing and five feet of something else. And so when I do my 180s, I'm actually getting a 10 foot strip of each crop. Uh, and that would just be a, a simple difference in those brassica mix that we're seeing here. Um, so kind of a for fun thing, um, I knew that we were or had plans to be hoping to get the drone footage done when I had seeded. And so I thought I would do something fun to see. Um, yeah, see if you can really notice it. Uh, and so it really makes me think, can I write something in my field that someone in an airplane is going to see um, when they fly over? And I think this trial says it's possible. And so then, then into August here, uh, again, there's not, uh, we're fairly close after being, or it's fairly short, so we can't really see a difference. Other than over here, I, it's funny, we went to pivots from wheel lines. And so for whatever reason, this was sprayed out for a wheel line. And then, so I've reseeded it as a line for pivot. So this is perennial grass and we can maybe see a bit of a difference how it's coming back. Um, so Devin, we're gonna so, have to, uh, we're gonna have to yeah. uh, get over to, to Tony at, uh, in a few minutes here, but I just wanted to sort of ask, 
has the will will this bird's eye view impact your management? Yeah, so I, I think the big thing is uh, my number one takeaway is we have a lot of impact on the ground uh, that we do not probably realize. And so um, just in terms of how, if we think that crop is thick, well, if you look at an overhead view, uh, it's really going to tell you what that solar, uh, what the solar panel is. Um, and then things like minerals moving it frequently because again it's the ground impact and that's the big thing we see and then again back to probably the ground impact of if you're going to do a high impact uh job like putting lime out you make sure that you do it and you're not going to have to do it for a long time because i think it has i think it's pretty clear that there is an impact on the ground it's great. So some some good lessons then from from the the aerial, the aerial view. Did you have some photos you were going to show? Sure, I had some uh, brief photos. So here's that map again. <clears throat> this is John. He did it for me. He was fantastic. Um, He's on here and uh, I'm sure you can look him up at four elements. Great, hopefully we'll have some time after eight o'clock to, uh, to chat if you're still yeah, around. Yeah, so here's, here's just a, a picture of all of this cover. Um, this would be April the 29th, so um, pretty early in the year, but this is all of that trash again that we were uh, dealing with and, and is, is great. And I think it'll be exciting to uh, maybe try take another one one fly over this year and and see if we can correlate uh, where this trash was. Uh, this would be May the second. So again, just showing all of this excess trash that we are fighting with, and the hawks are out eating a bunch of mice. So if you guys can think back to that August uh, aerial. And, and kind of how almost arid it looked. And so here's a picture from August the 21st. Uh, you can see the ground, we kind of think, oh, it, like it, it's growing back pretty good. Uh, you know, I'm pretty happy it's hot. We're getting water on it. Things seem to be growing back pretty good. Uh, and here again is that same day. Um, and yeah, just from a distance driving by, you think it's super green and that aerial photo really tells a different story. And, and so to think this, this, if you guys can think of what this photo um, in August, where we're standing is where the next photo of the cows are gonna be. And so this being that potential for, we see this overhead photo, um, it seems pretty marginal and it, and it does grow into something pretty thick and uh, this would be in October the 18th um, grazing on that. Um, and so with that, that is all.